Hello and good afternoon. So welcome to another uh, part of the webinar series of Vival Publishing. So uh, hello po and thank you to those who have viewed the first um, webinar that I conducted last um, last uh, when was it Saturday. So thank you very much for the uh, reception and I hope you learned from that. So today it's a different topic. It's today is now about an overview about online assessment. So are you ready to listen and to learn po for today? Let's see. Let me just share my screen with you. So, are you seeing my slide already? So let me just begin. So um, first of all, thank you Vival, for facilitating this particular uh, webinar series. So here we are going to talk now about online assessment. If, uh, what, uh, what, is, uh, what is online assessment and how different it is from the traditional assessment that we have. Yeah. So for those who know, so who, have, who I have been a sem uh, speaker before, uh, whether it's a workshop before sa inyo or in the webinar last Saturday, um, I am an educator. I was a former school administrator of two schools. Um, I'm doing consultancy work um, at the present. So I'm also a life coach, a mentor, and all of those things. But if you have questions, feel free. Now, um, I'm not sure if you have time to answer all the questions, but if you have questions and concerns, please message me through my LinkedIn Slack account uh, at Reservilisibal and my email so that I can address the concerns if we are not able to answer the concerns here in the um, particular webinar. Another disclaimer, because uh, of yung Saturday po, na-flood po ang aking uh, message. Actually, I didn't post my, so my social media account, but it was even flooded with messages on questions and concerns pertaining to um, not just the topic, but also the certificates. For the concerns, I can answer. But for the certificate concerns and administrative, please uh, send your inquiries for certificates and uh, products and services to Vival. I'll flash the um, the links, uh, the contact numbers, and the emails after. So for those who were not able to watch last Saturday, because this is a different topic altogether, where the topic we had was actually tips for uh, online teaching and certain approaches and doing online learning, uh, you may look at this link, copy it, and then also view it. You can also see, go to the Vibal uh, channel in YouTube and search for these particular videos. It's the same video, but um, two different patches. So that gives you all the, an overview of the teaching techniques and probably tips on approaches for teaching online. Because today's topic is now an assessment. So first of all, attendance check. I'm also monitoring the chats through the to our uh, Viber, I am sorry, Viber for our YouTube account. So let me just check kung saan po ba. We have a lot of viewers already. So I hope you will be able to learn and to also share whatever we, some of the learnings that you get from this session. Um, same as last session, just let me just set the ground rules for this particular uh, webinar. I have, uh, like in any classroom setting, I just have four rules, uh, basic rules. One is for listening. So please, uh, as I am your webinar speaker for today, kindly listen po. If, I hope you'll also learn. If there are opportunities to share or participate, which I'll also have the time for, please participate as well. Then also, please, uh, for interaction, please be kind, be open, participate. Some of the comments of our uh, other webinar participants you may not agree with, then let's be open. Keep an open mind. And then let's prepare. Um, if you want to have take notes, please get your materials ready. Um, if you want to take a picture of the slides, fine. Um, there's also another activity which may require another device. So if you're viewing this on a laptop, please do the your phone kasi meron po tayong activity. Uh, if not, it's fine. Just Try to participate kahit po not really as part of the, the actual interact, uh, interactive activity that we have. And then security. This is a safe space. So let's respect all ideas, all comments. Let's issue no judgments. Um, I'm not a perfect person and I don't, I'm not always right. So sometimes I mean bad mistakes or I mean something, you say something na hindi po kayo nag-agree. Pero sana po um, we'll also respect each other. 
Okay. So the great question right now here is, are you ready? So there are two big words that we will discuss or we will just have a big overview. One is the word assessment and the other is the word with a combined, uh, another big word combined, online assessment. So bago tayo magsimula, I'd like to ask you this question. How do you feel? Ngayon ba? Sa dalawang bagay, sa, uh, answer this question in two ways. One, ano po ang nararendaman nyo sa sitwasyon ngayon? Ayan. Kayo ba ay masaya na nasa bahay? Are you sad that nalulungkot because you cannot see your friends and your students? Are you worried? Or you are kind of uh, uncomfortable with the situation? Are you excited na nabatapos ang quarantine? Or are you confused on what's gonna happen for next school year? Okay. The other how do you feel question that I'd like to ask is how do you feel about online learning? So whether or not you implement it next year or on um, school year, do you feel happy about it? If you think na, well, it's something, an opportunity for me, are you worried? Are you feeling na excited or are you afraid of, the, of this particular lesson or this particular activity? So assessment is a very big word. Yeah. There's a lot of things attached to it. Tapos you add pa the word online to it. Does it change it when you put the word online in front of the word assessment? Yeah. Because sometimes if you recall when you were a student, and I would recall also when I was a student, this was a topic that was not covered in my syllabus. I'm not sure with the new syllabus, but this, I didn't know about this. There was a whole course on assessment, but there was nothing to specifically talk about online learning. Parang, parang, um, so yung mga kabatch ko po na, na, nung kapanahunan pa, yan, tanong natin, this, this is not covered in any my education courses. So uh, I, I'm not think, I don't think I'm ready for it. But then again, if the challenge is there and it's an opportunity to learn something new, then we try it. So before we begin, because we're also waiting for some participants and also maybe to also break the ice. Because you, you just ate, uh, you just uh, what do you call this? came from a meeting. If you're, you have another device with you that can access the internet, can you please go to kahoot.it? You type it in your phone and your um, what do you call this, or your other device. And because we are going to play a game for a while. So let me just open my... So if you're not familiar, Kahoot is just... A, but we'll just play a little game uh, to break dice and to um, also... So again, um, you know that when you do tests, you also have to do some things to motivate your your students, or maybe to break them from another subject, their their um their parang pari, their frame of thought is also in sync or with, with what's going to happen to uh, your lesson. Okay. Okay. So let me just share my screen now. So if you have your device, is it already logged on, Kahoot? So while, we, while waiting for my computer to load, so again, I know it, it's a very challenge. It's a very challenging. So I just hope you're all okay. You're all ready to learn, and um, of course, at the home, let's even if the quarantine is extended, you know, it, it's a new normal. We learn to adjust to um, our current situation. This is the difficulties of technology. Sometimes we are dependent on online uh, connectivity and sometimes there are delays caused by online. Uh, yan. Even if sometimes you have already tried it. Uh, um, yan. So this is our... And please... If you're already logged on, please um, use the game pin or log on in the game pin to join the particular game. So let's see how many players of the game we have. So if 
if you've already logged into www.kahoot.it, please log in the game pin, which is 26 um, 85677. And let's see how many of our teachers can actually join the game. There are only three questions. So let's see how many of you can get the answers. And the first three questions are all related to assessment. Just wait. Maybe we'll just give it a minute for everybody to be able to log in and join this particular game. The questions, if you're familiar with Kahoot, the question will flash on the screen, on the Zoom screen. But the, the selection or the choices will be on your device or on your phone. So you will only see the questions on the Zoom screen, but you have to answer using your device. So we have a lot of wow, we have a lot of teachers who seem to be uh, logged on and have so many devices. So sino hindi maniniwala na hindi na may mga teacher tayo na hindi, hindi maka, ano, may connection tayo sa we have good connection at home and I hope we maximize this also to learn and to encourage other people to learn as well. Let's just wait for the numbers to peak. Parang COVID, maunahan natin mag-peak si COVID. Mauna tayong mag-peak sa ano? So maybe last five four counts so that we can start the game. And medyo nagpipik na, bumababa ng number. So maybe we can start. So in your device, please check these particular questions. Or are you ready? So question number one. Based on studies, what is the most effective way to learn, the most effective way to learn is through please. Naku, baka bilisan natin sumagot. Kasi 170. Oh, see, we only had, from the 1,000, we only had 173. So, the correct answer is, this is process a bit. The best way to learn is actually through teaching others. Yeah. Man, naku. Let's see. A lot of, let's see the next question. So, Miss Nanette Serda was the top notcher natin sa speed and sa uh, next question. Quality multiple choice type of answers are easy to construct. True, true or false. Madali po bang i-construct ang multiple choice type of test? Kanina, we only had a few hundred who answered. Uy, we have more numbers answering at this point. So the correct answer, true. Multiple choice and uh, questions are the hardest kinds of items to construct. Okay, ba nag-change na si Professor K na ang number one. Now let's go to the next. Which domain of learning okay, covers areas of coordination, movement, grace, functions, and manipulation? Is it the cognitive domain, the affective domain, the psychological, or reflex movement? The main learning is coordination, movement, race, action, and manipulation. Kung ilang nakasagot, maybe these are... So the answer is, it's actually... This, let me check the answer. Psychomotor domain. So there are... Naku, ano, parang only about one-third were able to get it correct. So let's see. Based on this particular assessment, who's, who's the top three natin? So, so third place, Miss Mary Rose 02. Professor K is second place and first place is, let's see, to Miss Rain. So congratulations. Okay. Wait, let me just go see. So congratulations to our three uh, participants who garnered the highest, uh, the high scores that we had. Why did we do that particular, why did we do uh, uh, why did we have a particular test in the beginning? As we said earlier, it's important whether face-to-face -face or online learning siya, that you actually have a platform for to engage your students or to motivate them. So this is just one avenue or one way. And then at the same time, it also serves like a uh, pre-test for, for our students. So that, that's when we saw, I had an idea that some still have to have a brush on Ano ba yung probably domains of learning and then 
maybe a little, maybe since nakita a lot, I've also seen that, uh, what's the first question on assessment, then I have to go back to it or at least touch on it while I am also presenting uh, for this particular session. Okay? Yeah, so we're talking about assessment, a very big word. So before we continue with online assessment, let's just remind ourselves why we're assessing. There are three, diba? if you took the let or you studied this, you know that there are different, parang there's an, what we call assessment of learning, what we call assessment of learning and assessment as learning. When students do their self-evaluation and parang they reflect on their learning, and then they have their own assessment against standards naman when teachers use or test that in that assessment of learning. And then when you now check the student's learning, and the yung for that. And we'll touch on it a, a bit. Um, Rob, uh, Robles and um, Raven actually said that ngayon we have a shift and then we have to consider distance learning and online learning platforms. And, they, and he said that there, when we move that traditional classroom to an online class setting, there are three major things that change. One is human interaction, then learning paradigms, assessment techniques. So that means you don't see your students face-to-face, -face, online. You don't see other things, their gestures, you don't see if they're doing something else or they're listening to you. And the nature of the interaction now changes because instead of face-to-face, Hindi mo nang kahap change. There is now what is your platform for uh, teaching? Do you shift your content? Um, and then what are the assessment that you use? Is it going to be the same as before? Um, how do you evaluate your students? Now, if you attended the first session, some of these things were actually answered or rather uh, were discussed a bit. So it gives you an idea of how it changed. And then um, according to another literature source, sabi, well, um, because uh, you're doing distance learning and online learning, there are four things that you have to remember and which we will discuss in detail later. One, you have to enable your students to monitor their progress. So, ibig sabihin may self-check or evaluation. To give regular feedback to students or later. I'll discuss that also so not to preempt myself. No, Support peer learning and assessment. Uy, support may peer learning. So, that means there should be collaboration that happens. And then, you have to design self-assessment practices. So these are the add-ons to assessment and learning. Now, take muna, isipin natin, we're, we're now doing online assessment. Does that change our teaching goals? Does that change our objectives? Now, when we map it out, some, or do we add something? Now, um, if you've attended my webinars or seminars before, I'm really fond with the, of uh, acronyms. So for in my... By looking at literature and adding my own um, reminders to myself, I always believe that online assessment should have the following. C. And I use the acronym ICTS, Information and, and Information and Communication Technology Services. Bayan? Puede. Pero what does ICTS mean? ICTS means, one, your online assessment should still have instructional and curriculum goals. So the learning, the learning competencies should still be there, okay? And now what, what are you asking yourself what should be taught? And then you also ask, what are the collaboration and interaction goals? Hmm, collaboration. Teka muna, parang is still the same as K-12. Because yes, a collaboration should, should still be there, even if it's in an online platform. And then the other is you have to have your own technology goals as well. And student development goals. So just to briefly uh, go into this because I want to focus on examples of online assessment later on. So we'll just go through this. Number one, let's talk about instructional and curriculum goals. So let's pose a question. What knowledge, skills, and attitudes are you still evaluating or what are you testing for? So pag, when you do your online assessment, but you go back to the framework, ano yung ina-assess mo? What are you testing? Um, is it knowledge? Company? So, so just a recap. I know most of you or maybe all of you already know the Bloom's taxonomy and this is the revised one that you have to consider the higher and the lower order thinking skills. When you do an assessment, and not just in a lesson, but in an assessment, do you all only do surface? You just ask about facts. Is it just recall na who is the father of uh, uh, communication or something like that? Or 
history is, is it historical facts or dates kasi that means it's only in the remember part or in the on the parang lower order but your does your online assessment also provide for analysis or evaluation do you ask your students to criticize do you ask your students to create something to formulate or develop okay. and i know this is very familiar the doom taxonomy okay? uh yung ating for cognitive but i'm not sure if a lot of you are also familiar that cognitive is the mind okay psychomotor now are the skills so even if your lesson is math or english that their lesson should also have provisions for addressing cognitive domain of the uh, learning. So if you're not familiar, of course, we, this is not our topic. This is just an overview. So I can't discuss so much, but just, just a breather. You talk about different things and how to assess your students. Or do they memorize steps, skills? Do they know it by heart? Can they do something on their own? Or do they interpret this particular uh, movement or this particular st uh, steps or process differently. So you, that's a psychomotor domain. And just giving you where you can actually go through sources in the internet, look for it, um, so that you also realize, oh, Bloom has a technology for knowledge and it's so known by so, so many. But a lot of alam na meron palang psychomotor domain uh, na parang taxonomy. And of course, if meron psychomotor, there's also an affective domain. So ibig sabihin, you ask yourself, Wait, teka na. Dati knowledge, ano lang, understand yung mga alam ko. Right now, meron din pala. When we talk about integration and valuing, we also have to realize that there are also levels of values and levels of attitudes that also be assessed in our learning. So, kanina, the first second is ano yun? Um, instructional goals. So, when we set these instructional goals, we have to make sure even if the platform is online, there are provisions for all these three. Okay. Uh, next, so we go now to another goal. When you set your online um, their, uh, online assessment, there should be collaboration and interaction goals. So I ask myself, in your assessment, what opportunities are there to interact and to collaborate? Now, when you say collaborate, it doesn't necessarily mean with classmates, okay? which I'll discuss later, but there should be a lot of opportunities and diversified activities and assessment. There's activities for the student to do as an individual, and there are activities that the student can do as part of the group. Clear? Clear po ba? But anyway, if you have questions, feel free to ask. We'll try to answer them later. Next is technology goes. This is one of the differences when we talk about using an online platform. Um, this can also be done in face-to-face, -face, but this is more of um uh what they call this uh later on your next slide natin will be all about the technology goals because when you use these particular collaborations individual collaborative feedback group assessments all of these things there should still also be now a use of technology so the question for the technology goals are what skills are learned transferred and manifested during the assessment so take a Anong, what technological skills are we talking about? Okay, now when, because you are now using um, technology or online to assess, so I just put, point the word, I don't know if some of these e-things exist, no? but I just wanted to put it in that manner. Na una, do they know how to communicate using an online platform? Remember that it's face-to-face, -face, you do oral communication, but there's oral communication that you can load online but there's also a communication where they can type their responses or they can answer um, in your if you have a school learning management system or lms how do they present using an online platform what software or things that can they use to present their um, answers their ideas for parang performance assessment uh, na, uh, natin is there a provision or any skills that they get in terms of designing this, not just designing an artwork, but designing their presentation, designing their um, their parang their submission, their project. Do is there also processing involved, like for math, for computer, and other subjects? Do they need to do a survey and get the results and then process this not using pen and paper, but using let's say Excel or spreadsheet, or is there are also provisions, are there provisions for e-marketing? Do they need to do uh, parang for the entrepreneurship lessons? Is there a particular skill on marketing and that particular lesson? And what skill is um what skill uh, is there 
people what skill is there that they could get from. Ganon ding skill na kailangan natin consider is this so utilize particular devices. So can I, do I also put that as my goal that they are able to use this particular software, this particular, the phone as a device or their laptop, their computer or their tablet and then does it also test their use of certain platforms? If your school has an LMS or learning management system, for example, uh, Vibal has Visma, and then your school has that, do they all pass they can submit or, or they're parang mabayon, pagamit ng software? Is there a particular skill or added on to the um, instructional goals that you have? Meron ng hands-on or technology goals that are used for assessment. So you have to also, the back of your mind, you also ask what particular add-on technology skills are added when you talk about online assessment. And then, This can be part of or outside the particular goals on instruction. It can also be self-development. What particular things does the student develop by doing certain assessment exercises? Like um, this. Using your uh, particular materials, using your particular, sorry, that using your particular, um, you call it, using your particular uh, assessment tools. So, sorry, yeah, that that's a technology lapse. That, that's a problem now of being online. Sometimes you have to be dependent on communication signals. So again, the zero assessment provide opportunities for the student. Maybe you add on not just for the student but for the teacher. How does it also make you improve yourself as a teacher? Not just providing opportunities for your student but also for yourself. So just a reminder, you have seen this probably when you were learning your education uh, units, right? You have to realize that when you also test, because we are looking for goals and objectives in teaching, don't offer too many uh, online assessments. If we're, and then it's it's all not having a wala siyang direction or it's not directed towards a particular instructional goal. And also try to keep your goals focused. We may be overwhelmed by the number of things happening, but that does not mean that our goals are now going to change and the way that we handle things. The only difference is we are talking about an online platform. So when we set our goals for the assessment, when we set what needs to be assessed, ano ba yung kailangan i-measure, ano ba yung kailangan tingnan, it is the same. It is just an online platform. And let's not be too overwhelmed sometimes. Sometimes the simplest assessments can also offer you a lot of results. Okay. So let's now go to the tips. So if we talked about the goals, we now go to the actual implementation of online assessment. The tips now are also on this particular part. So so far, are you still good? Um, are you still doing fine? Yeah. So, so that we can continue as well. So if we look at it, um, online assessment should have, so again, as I said earlier, I like acronyms. Um, I'm always interested in making things uh, simple to remember. So we go, we now go back, teka muna, anong, anong kailangan meron ng online assessment? Okay? So I think online assessment, it's not a misspelled word, it's really like that. Online assessment should have favors. Ba? Kailangan pala may pabor kapag ka online assessment. So what does favors mean? Okay? First, online assessment should have one, frequency. Two, feedback. I don't know how to count. Feedback. Three, authenticity. Four, variety. Six, as, uh, five, options or choices. Six, rubrics. And then the last is self-assessment. Again, so again, on, remember, kanina sabi natin, online assessments should, goals should, should be ICTS. Uh, instructional curriculum goals, uh, collaboration, uh, technology and stu uh, student um, 
and this husband. And now we have oh, sorry. Um, now we have now they should now now we talk about assessment having favors, like frequency, feedback, authenticity, variety, options and choices, rubrics, and self-assessment. So what is F? What the, this is the first F frequency. The first question is, I think this question is posed not just in online learning, but also in face-to-face -face learning. This is a challenge for us teachers. The question is, how often do you assess? Okay, how, how many times do you assess? So if you talk about frequency, it's very important to note that you have to assess often, pero not naman so much that everything is all geared towards assessment. Remember, assessment is a tool to to gauge learning and to help our students, but it's not it's not to be supposed to be just right, for the sake of assessing a student or getting a, a record. Because again, we don't want to cause undue stress, and because the objective of all of these things is learning. The objective is learning, not assessment, because assessment is a tool. So when you do your calendaring of your schedule, try to map out how what how what is my period of time is this lesson going to be supposed to be one month or one week or is this a quarterly calendar i plot you already plot or i plot nyo na ilan ang magiging assessments ninyo ilan ang quizzes ilan ang activities tapos i-check nyo um masyado madalas o masyadong konti and then the other question is ito what is the coverage of each quiz or each ano kasi remember we talk about when you do tests, indeed the, yung, the summative tests or yung final tests should cover everything. But there should be assessments in between to check up learning. For example, in math, you can't go to the finals or the quarterly exam without doing little quizzes in between because the little quizzes in between help you to find out what is the ano, what is the level of learning of your students. So same then yan in online assessment, map it out. And then what is the time needed for the students to answer? And then what is the time needed also for you to announce? Okay, I've had experience with teachers uh, before that students will complain online platform. Ma'am, ano, ma'am, um, this teacher, the, the deadline is tomorrow. She, she posted the assignment only 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. today. And we have class na ng, at 7 a.m. So when you talk about assessment and frequency, and when you give these assignments, also consider the time for the students. Is it enough time for your students to do this? And then, hindi pa nakakapag-submit na itong requirement, then you give another assignment. So please consider that as well. Because you can mo now you can track it because it's online. Eh. You can see how many assessments you have. And then the other, okay, which is the, that's why it's a three exclamation points, time. Ibig sabihin, do you have enough time to check these works? If you cannot check them, all of them, please do not, give so many activities that you cannot check and you cannot give your next F, which is feedback. So just to just to give an overview again, because I know some of us may not be from the education or graduated education, or, or this is also a review for those who are taking the lift. Um, I kind of did a table on the, the three types of tests, which is the diagnostic, formative, and summative. And this encompasses assessment. So the one we did earlier, the Kahoot activity, was a di diagnostic kind of assessment where I'm trying to find out what is the level of learning of the, the participants of this particular webinar. So I found out, oh, um, may mga question, there are questions that um, not even half would what got the correct answer. I don't know because if maybe it was time pressure or it was um, something else or nalito sa choices. But again, when you talk about diagnostic exam, it is supposed to be administered before. It's supposed to be the, actually, it's supposed to be, it should not be recorded because the purpose of this is to gauge the initial active, initial ability of your student. So, pwede yan, at the beginning of the quarter, beginning of a lesson, you do a quiz, oh, how many got this score? So, if you can guess the students, even on an online platform, which students need help, which students are advanced, and which students are kind of um, on the, on the, in the middle. So sometimes if you use the online platform to do the test, you can easily give, give the feedback and ge probably generate the score. Remember, diagnostic test should not be like essay writing. It should be short. It should be administered fast as well because it sets benchmarks and remediation. And then if you have a lesson plan, you can adjust your lesson based on 
the scores of the students, oh, I still need to catch up. So I'm going to set one day, uh, another online day to, or give them an additional reading material with, before we proceed to the next online module. Then the formative assessment talks about uh, yan yung mga quizzes nyo in between. Those are the ones that, um, those are the ones that talk about the program, yun yung mga projects in between, uh, the quarter, uh, topic uh, assignment, these are the assignments, the seat work, the quizzes, because now these help you monitor their progress. And if you can, the purpose of this ideally is for you to be able to give feedback. Like for example, uh, these students got a low score dun sa inyong online quiz or mababa. So you can be able to give feedback and remediation and also per, get these particular skills to to the end parang to, to reach the particular goal of learning. And then you talk about the last type which is the summative exam or making sure that they learn. So usually it's done at the end of the quarter, at the end of a particular unit or finance for upper levels, it's finance, it's midterms. Because now you evaluate the summative things that they learn for that particular period or that particular module. So remember, formative are the little things, mga mini mini topics and the summative. So this still exists in the online learn assessment. So in online Online assessment, this all should still, if if you, you have to also make sure that they are all there. Okay? Because again, you have to scaffold or assist the students for learning. So an example, sang po, uh, pad, uh, let's just go through this. Like examples of doing diagnostic, you can do your pre-test or checklist for learning. Which topics, ganyan, these are the topics for a quarter. Which things do you feel you already know about, which, do, which you do not know. Or uh, sometimes for a particular lesson, KWL or... Uh, ano yung KWL ulit? What you know, what you want to know, and then at the end of the session, what you have learned. And that's why you're KWL. So there are a lot of things where you, what, that you can uh, do so that you can also do your diagnostic. So again, the diagnostic should not be graded. If you want to have it considered in the grading, mag ang maganda is look at the score of the student in the pretest and the development for process. But, but otherwise, the diagnostic test on its own should not be Read it. Now we have now formative assessment examples. So you have your quizzes that, that, that happened, activities, journals. So these are examples. We'll have more examples later as we go along this particular webinar. Then you have your, as we said, the summative exam or summative ex assessment, which now talk about the uh, end of quarter, end of year, uh, unit tests or unit long tests, these are now summative assessment to gauge what you have learned for all. Now, sometimes in the written yung exam, uh, for remember, we're performance-based assessment right now. Some some can do like research at the end of the school year or the end of the term, may exhibits, portfolios, and, um, for, you can have a special project. So it, it, there are a variety of ways you can do the three types of tests. But remember, the diagnostic should be fast, uh, quick to administer as well, and then it will give you a benchmark of learning. The, the formative should give you little packets of how, what do they know and what do they don't know. And then the summative is usually because it's just for grading and, some are, and checking already their uh, achievement for that particular uh, lesson or topic. Now we now talk about um, F or the FIVORS acronym, which is feedback. Now, feedback, I pose a question, how soon do you send the results and give your students feedback? So again, this applies for both face-to-face -face and online learning. Um, are you able to give them their school course within a particular um, time period? Often, as much as possible, there are schools that have rules. For example, if you give a quiz, dapat within three days, my return sa students. Or some schools who say, Within um, a week, dapat it should be returned and no, not beyond. The reason for this is because it provides your student feedback on their tests, their quizzes, and their um, performance in your class. So that if they know they have to catch up or if they failed at a quiz, kailangan may opportunity sila to be able to catch up or they go back and study the lesson over. And then it helps you identify and help the students who are at risk or those who need help. Because again, as teachers, our role is also to help our students to learn. Okay? It's not about who's, who's faster or, or who's uh, 
who's able to do advanced lessons. What is more important is we try to help and at least identify first the students who need help, who have low scores. And then, of course, another factor is your schedule. As we said, do not give so many activities that you cannot check. Kasi minsan, you know, I, maybe some of you might be guilty about this. Na, makita niyo yung table niyo, nag-pile up na yung quizzes. Your project's piled up. Tapos next week, may project na naman. So, at the end of this, the the what the week or or the month, your table is filled to the brim na hindi na kayo nakikita ng fellow teachers niyo because the one that they see are the piles of paper that you were not able to check, not able to record, not able to return to the students. Does that happen in online assessment? Yes, because if you're like it gets flooded so if their assessments or submission of students who got piled up then that also um is a warning for us that we, maybe we're giving too much or are we setting enough time to check the students work now providing feedback also is dependent on your deadline so also make sure the students have enough time also to do the activity and for you to check and the reason another reason why feedback Sending feedback is also critical is because it you should have time also to identify students who are not able to submit. Because if you did not check yet, you have no way of finding out who was late in submitting, who did not submit. Unless, because before, diba, you have um, student monitors in class uh, who can check that. But in the online platform, depends on how they submit. It will help if you have a learning management system so that you can track when the submissions are done and you can see a summary of who uh, has not yet submitted. For example, uh, yeah, so we, yeah, I'll just, because we are talking about you, so you should be smart. And be smart, you will see who has submit and who has not. Pag may learning management system, you can see outputs fast who submitted or not but if it's a submission in the email or in sometimes your teachers ask to submit in facebook then sometimes you have to check one by one so it, if you don't have time to do all of these things you have to make sure that your activities are planned towards your calendar and then you have a lot particular time to check return and give feedback before you actually go to the next assessment lesson or all of those things okay next we go to the a na tayo. T, uh, before we go to A, yeah, so these were the questions that we met, discussed earlier. Do you have enough time to check all the submitted work? Because again, rather than just feedback, it, all, it will depend on you and your schedule also. How long were you able to return the work? And were you able to provide the feedback? So just to summarize what we talked about, and of course, more importantly, was your feedback to the students helpful? Was it something that could... For example, if it's on deadline, it's a reminder on the constant reminder, or it's to improve their work, uh, or to do submission, or where, what areas nung project or quiz did they get a low score, and then they have also an opportunity to make up for it. And of course, all of this, as I said, this is a very important picture for me, make time for yourself. Okay, because you are also important. So sometimes we are too overwhelmed with the many activities and graded activities or with some of you are OC with time, you have to return again. Make sure that's why you map up your lesson, you map out your assessment, you have enough time also to do all of these things and also set a little time for yourself. Okay, Being in the quarantine is stressful already for some and it's all, being a teacher is also stressful and going to go through possibly changes and to learn something new is also very stressful. But that's why it's important that you plan out your activities and also plan out how you're going to implement and where you're going to put in those assessments. Because again, assessment should help learning. It, it should not deter it. So pag masyadong marami, nas ang opportunity of the students to learn. Okay, so now we go to the A, which is authenticity. So in authenticity, so I think the the question is uh, the question is that so do you send the results and give feedback? But it also talks about do you assess your students' skills for your life? So for example, when you give them a leading activity, it's preferred that you use authentic material. So authentic material is you use newspaper clippings, existing blogs or news articles particular uh, existing interviews. So real life resources are examples. And then authenticity also talks about being able to apply these skills. Hindi, the situation is not imaginary. So when you give a problem, I, I appreciate math because sometimes you have to be very creative. I, I used to be a math teacher. So 
pag we give examples, before you would say um, imaginary things like uh, this Pokemon had this ano, ano yan, number of badges, niyan, which is fine. I say that's that's a game. But sometimes it's too absurd. The examples are too absurd. Try to use real life examples. Kalimbawa, if this example is a market setting, how much do you pay? Ito yung scenario. Um, like for, when I was a teacher, I used to collect brochures. I used to collect yung mga sa, sa, sa grocery, the price list things, and that's one I give to students. Can you also do that online? Yes. You can load or use a particular link to a particular price list, for example, and use that for your exact, for your for your assessment, or for example, look at this price list. What are the what are the costs? And then your example should also be realistic, because again, the purpose is its authenticity or being applicable to real life. And then, um, in the, the authenticity also talks about provisions to use, uh, individual, both individual and collaborative. Why work? The reason why I put this here is because in the real in in the real parang real world, the real world na part time PBB no, but real world when they go out or when they grow up, they have to also work at times as an individual, and then there are always opportunities for them to work as a team. That's why in the twenty first century learning, collaborative working or or working in teams is always an object, part of an objective of learning because we have to also be able to work in an environment that we collaborate, not just in face-to-face, -face, but also online. For example, you work on a document uh, or a project, but again, there are also limitations to that. So when you talk about authenticity, your reminders, going back, recap, source out using real materials, news clip, paper clippings, articles, stories, use real life situations for it, both it, both uh, both individual and collaborative work in assessment so this particular quarter what were the as things that i assess my, or ask my students to submit individual work or answer or as an, that i ask them to submit as a part of a team or a group and then how can you come up with manageable teams for collaboration right in the real sense there are opportunities that they work as two people as a team uh, of two people, sometimes as four. So keep the teams. If you attended the first webinar I did Saturday, I always emphasize keep the teams for collaboration manageable. Especially, it's very difficult to control if all of your, you say a class project. It's okay if you are already defining the rules for them. But if not, and just leaving to it to them without defining the rules, sasabog po talaga. Because it's very hard to monitor so many students. Um, and then if you ask them to do an activity all together as one, that's also difficult. So when you also give them um, collaboration assignments, make sure the teams and the membership are also uh, manageable. Okay. Next is we have a variety. So that means, okay, in this day and age, you know about Gen Z and Gen A, a lot of them also get bored with a lot of things. You also get bored if you tend to do the same thing over and over again. And it also is a, uh, is a limitation or a challenge for assessment because if you're always using the same multiple item structure, uh, to all falls, if always your assessments are like that, then they'd already learn to predict what kind of tests they're going to study for online. That's a 10-point item. But if you vary the, the, the assessment, which I will show you examples of after this slide, um, it, you now give them different opportunities to also one practice or learning, then another is also they do not anticipate sometimes what, what assessment it is. And then we are also reaching out to more students because not all students are as equipment in terms of this, but we are trying to assess different kinds of skills. So we also have different uh, strategies of assessment that we have to employ. But we have different kinds of tests. You have provision for different kinds of groups. It's not always the same group. And then you have different challenges. So I'll just give you some ideas. I have a different uh, seminar on that I conduct on uh, creative teaching strategies and creative assessments, but this is just some of the slides that I put in. So just to give you an idea, now wait, other than the typical, uh, the typical true or false online that I construct in my LMS or I send to my students or essay or whatever, what, what other ideas can I do to assess my students online? Okay, okay for example, ito, 
di ba, you can ask them, right? An online journal. Some of the teachers I've seen that post in Facebook or submit an on, it to me online or come up with a blog, a uh, journal. Then some of you do reaction paper on a, situ on a news article, on a situation, yan, portfolio, blog, news articles, and, or, or write the news article. If you are a newscaster, reporter, write an, a news art, e news article on this one or a post. Diba? Sometimes, meron niya, um, yun lang, disclaimer, don't, don't ask your students too much to have a post and then your score is dependent on the number of likes. Kasi sometimes that's, that's, parang it's a tricky thing. What are you, my question is, what to the teachers would, if that is a kind of post, what are you assessing? Yeah. Do, do they like it, like it because they are their friends or do they like it because it's really, the, the post is really, really bad? So, yun, medyo, a little caution on that. So, if you look at the picture, yan, um, reaction paper, cut it over Facebook. Ganyan po. Baka mamaya the student will submit something like that. Now, there's a way to counter that and we will talk about it later. It's the use of particular rubrics in scoring. Okay, you all can also do newscasts or news reports. You can do yeah, the live uh, TV review. They can videotape it or they can do a audio recording, do a podcast um, of that one particular thing. And then they can do a radio show. Let's simulate a radio show or a podcast where they interview. And they don't necessarily need to be in the same place. Diba? can be a collaboration. Yung parang if you did before, you can do the other collaboration teams like uh, in Google, go to, go, to, uh, go to meeting. Although, yun, yun, may mga security concerns. But if there are connectivity, is fine. Or they can do a recording. Kasi pag record naman yan, it doesn't mean live. They can they can edit it. They can do exhibits. They can do video log, video uh, exhibit, uh, collages. Yeah. They can you can ask them to submit graphic organizer. They can do a chart, a table, and then submit it to you in a table form. Ako, I'd like that because I also like things to see that the students also do a presentation time in terms of a graph. They can do a collage. Uh, pwedeng as an individual. Like say, okay, yan yung typical yung vision board or Right, uh, get up pictures that are associated with this particular history figure, then explain. Or you can do this example in the one on the screen is a concept map where you actually put um, the different concepts together and how do they cluster or they group it. Now, this can also test them because it now makes them organize their thoughts as well. And then because they create a visual model for their learning that they submit to you, then mas naaalala nila and there is more recall in terms of what is being uh, uh, assessed or presented. And then you look at another kind is you ask the students to come up with a brochure. But right now, a lot of people like brochures, tarps, and all of those things. Come up with a brochure or tarp design. Pero kailangan uh, makita doon yung this particular concept. Diba? Or you can ask the student to make an ad. Now, when you do an ad, it's not just about the product. Let's say, for example, you're doing an ad to promote a particular uh, history figure. Let's say if Rizal, Jose Rizal will run for office ngayon, can you come up with a like poster that we can post in Facebook on that talks about this Rizal? So, or, or an ad about a certain uh, let's say topic, let's think about math, like um math, uh, area perimeter. Can you make a advertisement using concepts ng area perimeter? So again, these are methods or these are strategies to assess your student. Again, um, since Facebook is so kind of in with almost everybody in the Philippines, you can ask the students to come up with like a, not, I'm not against actually posting the activity in social media, but you can ask them to come up with a design that is similar to Facebook, where they can put like a similar yan, character profile in, this, in the style of Facebook or a historical figure, past or present, that they do a figure, or to come up with a product, let's say they come up with a, Facebook page for a particular product. Not, not. I'm again. My principle is personal, naman. But of course, you can do it. I don't want to do it online. But I want to as a student to just simulate the the design and then show it to me. If it were a Facebook post, what how what how would it look like? Yeah. And then so again, yeah, that's an example. You can also do when I went to um, Dubai. There was a school that I went to. And it was so entertaining because I saw in the side of the school, they were doing exhibits of student works. One of the students' works that I was wow wow. I, I said, well, I didn't even think about this. The poster that they did was 
in the format of an Instagram post. So there was a picture and then there was a comment below and then the students would like it if they like the post and then it goes around. So parang that's also a matter. Now, uh, again, um, you can do it using social media or you can just do like uh, a ng infographic or picture to the student. If you don't want them to use it online, then that's fine. You can ask them to draw that using a poster, take a picture of it and send it to me. So come up with something that they, is familiar with them because again, we are talking about real life. So what also can motivate them is using authentic, not just examples, but authentic ways to present it. Okay, next, we come up with different lifelines. Like um, when you talk about lifeline, it doesn't just talk about persons. It also can talk about a process or a particular procedure. Let's say, for example, um, minsan lifeline used in psychology, you make your own lifeline. But what if you ask your students to make a lifeline of a historical figure, like Make a lifeline of, uh, let's say, uh, Jose Rizal, Andres Bonifacio. What are the high points of his life? What are the low points? So they all now recall um, his life. And then Hindi, it's not a rem remembering of dates, but it's also remembering of significant sequence of events. It can also be a lifeline of a process. And then paano siya sa submit? That students can draw on their paper, they can take a picture, or they can actually utilize um, tools online. Like they can use... Uh, Particularly the the draw the paint to do it the the work the uh, PowerPoint or other tools to do this and then load their activity on uh, to you for submission. So you don't need necessarily always you to do, but of course I, I'm just saying these are alternatives. I'm not saying don't do the multi the typical multiple choice uh, fill in the blanks. These are also there because I know that's the the things that we are used to. So I'm not saying don't do that. I'm saying that on top of those things, these are um, creative ideas for you to do your online assessment. You can also do, uh, okay, for example, you're going to do an email, a letter to this personality, the president, to, or are you going to do a letter or email to your friend of what you have learned this quarter or what you have learned uh, in this particular subject? Or you're going to make an email to this particular person about the issue. Yung isang, the usually thing that I ask one of the teachers to do when I do this workshop ng face-to-face -face is a recipe book. How do you come up with the, how do you make, a, or not necessarily a recipe book, but you, if you come up with a manual, let's say a one-page manual on something, um, write it down. Yeah, if you are going to do a process, parang flowchart, or parang an arrow with that, Tell me the steps on how to add or how to subtract or multiply and show it to me uh, visual, in visual form. And then when you do a person, they can do a contract. But where, where can contract be done? It, it's a contract between agreements of what has been learned and what has been not. One of my favorites is also top three, top five, ten, and so, which can be done in different ways. Like instead of asking the students to write a paragraph or reflect in paper, Tell them in one day, in uh, parang no less than 400 words, write down your top three learnings for this. So that, that's the tradition, kind of a uh, modified tradition. But sometimes I also say, okay, to reflect on your learning, how if you're going to symbolize top five characters or top five lessons, what song or story or historical figure can you relate it to and why? Okay, for example, in math, what particular top five equations do you like? What or top three um, yan, uh, symbols that you can use? So it it again it, it sky's the limit in terms of how you can use these particular ideas for. You know. If you're also uh, aware of bonus thinking hats, um, you can also use this. Like for example, you have a discussion for today, then you can ask particular students to use particular hats. Um, by by the way, um, bonus hats are talking about uh, when you use a hat, a uh, particular hat, the, 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 the thrust or the one that you need to talk about is about facts or figures. So, para knowledge level. And then you talk about, pag create green siya, you talk about new ideas. So, if you have a topic, then you ask them to wear a particular hat or to use a particular hat in thinking or to share their synthesis or summary or concept. For example, okay, this team you... Come up with your uh, report using a white hat, this team a black hat, this team a red hat. 
or individual reflection, choose two hats and then show me what, what your um, learning is using these particular hats. So again, it, it allows the students to be creative and it allows them also to organize their, th their thoughts on what is relevant in terms of thinking. Um, another idea that I use with this is, uh, it's a military term, but the S is another thing. I just changed it. Um, sometimes we also have to teach our kids to keep things short and simple. Uh, using the proper grammar, language, and rules of internet, try to, uh, I, sometimes if I ask the students to synthesize, um, so the reason was I tell them, use old Twitter, 140 letters in your reflection, one, one that is only like, like two sentences or three. Or if I use a longer, I want a longer answer, I say Twitter loop. Note that these are characters, not um, not letter, uh, not words. The reason why these are important is because when you talk about um, what, uh, what you call this online platforms also, the short, the, they have to be trained also when they use online platforms to use shorter um, la languages for that. Okay, next week, so you just have an idea that yeah, it's very easy to do variety, to be creative when you talk about online assessment. Um, so, it is being, sky's the limit. You can actually do a lot of things. Next, we go to the next one, which is options or choices. So, you have to make provisions for students also. I'm not, not all the time, hindi la, sa lahat ng pagkakataon, pero pwedeng may mga pagkakataon, meron kayong options for them to choose what will they know and what how do they are going to answer it? Or provisions for some students who cannot, and uh, let's say it's a project that they can propose also how they're going to go about it. For example, ito, I just got one of the books, the one that I told uh, in a storytelling session with Vibal. You ask them to come up with a profile. So sabi mo, okay, you submit to me a profile or you submit to me an interview of the author, find him in Facebook and interview him or look for his previous works. Or... So you write your reflection on this. So instead of just a reflection, then you give them options on how they can answer uh, that particular uh, exercise. Again, and then the last, I think this is very important. You have to provide clear standards. So are you measuring what needs to be measured? So when you talk about the rubrics, at least three things should be there. What's the task and the criteria and the indicators? So it's all, uh, the teachers were familiar with this. You know that rubrics contain uh, evaluative data definition. So that means it's a chart, it's a table that helps us score objectively. Because sometimes, uh, ako, my pitfall when I was a student was that when my teacher assesses my work, particularly projects, they would say, uh, parang, ako, project, mas maganda, mas creative yung work ko, tapos my score is 8. But my classmate, hindi naman ganun nag-effort. Bakit 10? Tapos when you ask your teacher, malinis. So parang sabi ko, it, this is an art project, not a cleanliness project. Wait. So so do, in those aspects, it gives an objectivity even if you're in your online assessment. So for example, you have to put what are the criteria. Di ba, pag, if you go to a beauty contest, you, you are judged based on particular scenarios. So what is the criteria? Again, and what platform will you use to do this particular um, asset? Parang how do you do this? rubrics yeah so you should all when you do your rubrics it, it should specify what are you what are you assessing and what are the parameters when do you give a score three to one for that particular example so for example this is just something i wrote na example your your exercise is an online research paper they will submit so you have to write the number of sources have they organized it so kunyari pag tapos may do you have another metrics which is if they submit on time then they one point but if they don't say a score they can get this nine because they cannot get that one anymore or for example you can put uh, metrics on grammar structure organization so can you still use your rubrics for face-to-face -face assessment and activities and online the answer is actually a yes and no because sometimes you took at there are things that you can assess on a face-to-face -face platform and there are things that you need to assess you can you Meron, there are also metrics or criteria na idadagdag mo or you will add on which is not all, which cannot be measured in face to face for example if you remember the goals you have technology goals so you can put those particular skills so for example if you look this 
at this particular um, rubrics that I got from the internet on assessment, can you actually use this for um, a group activity? Okay, sige. give you a minute to look over it. If, if yes and no, what particular criteria can you use in online assessment? Okay. You will see that you can use a process, time management, cooperation, but can you use the neatness and orderliness? So you have to adjust it a bit or because their workplace is not there physically, but you can change it or you can add something else to it. Now speaking, usually pag speaking, do you think this uh, can also be used online from the face-to-face? -face? Okay. If you look at it, yes, kasi, uh, but because there is no particular platform that there is a non-verbal face-to-face metrics, then this part, because it only focuses on what is being said, the vocabulary language, if it's a recorded interview or it's a, like an interview, ng, um, let's say you're using your online interviewing the student and another line, then this can also be used. Okay, so again, uh, the, the other thing is you have to look at um, how you, even the, the things that you ask the students to submit, your maps, your drawings, so everything, you have to have at least a simple rubric. Kunyari, kahit ano lang, kahit, kunyari, cleanliness, how many, how many errors, how many corrections, how many points will you allow for it? How many errors are allowed for grammar, for example? So, if you look at it, some, what are the examples of you can actually put in the criteria? So, the, this is not exhaustive. So, you can still put mastery skills, knowledge of topic, preparation, presentation, how they follow directions. Because again, you are not there physically to tell the students what to do and how to do it. So if they can read through the directions and follow it, then it can be a matrix. How creative is the output? Grammar, uh, confidence, network. So the, the lower part of the list is for actually projects and other performance assessment tools. But if you're talking about um, yung mga multiple choice, um, true or false, and all of these things, it's usually going to the mastery of skills and then the submission as well. You can also put here like use of technology, if technology is part of the goals or skills that you are also measuring for that particular team. And then there should be provision for uh, self-assessment. So what? how do the students sit at the end of the course? If you have an LMS, this is very easy to do. You can ask them to do rate themselves according to what they have learned. And um, they can also have them rate themselves based on yeah, the, your, your, your assessment, submit your assessment of learning. So even in online learning, especially for collaboration, it can be done. If a student is asked to present, then it's easier for you to ask the students to rate that particular presentation or project if that is the objective. Yeah. So remember that when you are talking about learning and assessment, diba? Confucius uh, used to say, yeah, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and understand. So in the same way for learning and assessment, if the students just hear about it, they kind of forget it. But because people are more visual, then they see it, then they remember it. That's why the online assessments are when you do the test online and then they see the actual test rather than just listen to that one. When you say the items number one, number two, and then ask them to answer in paper, if it's online and they see it, then it's easier for them to recall the key concepts because and the assessment because it's already right in front of them. But if their assessment is also about involving doing and interacting, then they understand more. Now, let's go back to one of the questions in the diagnostic part. In the diagnostic part, we ask what is the best way for the students to learn? It's teaching others. Now, why is that? If you look, I, did, uh, I didn't put in the slides anymore, the pyramid of learning, it's, it's the one that students learn the most. Because who learns when they teach others? It's not the one they're teaching, it's them. Because if they teach others, they're going to research on a topic. That's why reporting is effective. Not for the ones who the student will report to. Hindi dun sa re-reporta nila. But it will be more effective to the person who is going to do the reporting. Because he or she will report. Uh, so he, he or she will research the topic. He or she will present, do the presentation. He or she will be ready for questions from the student. So the best, the person who learns the most in teaching others is the one who's teaching others, not the one who are they are teaching. That's why teaching others is actually the most uh, effective way to 
each. Although yun nga, you also have time provision for others. So for example, it's very good, it's very helpful if your uh, learning management system in the school also has provisions for you to put uh, the assignments, the seat work, or the formative assessments, or even the summative assessment into a platform. So an example of that is uh, Vibalsian, yeah, Smart, where there, if, if you have any LMS, it will help you track if the students again submit on time, and you were able to give feedback for the students, which is not something that you can easily do on a face-to-face -face, um, uh, assessment. And then if you check other platforms, um, LMS and then other learning plan versus OMOO, um, you can see that there are interactive activities that can be already there, which are also creative. So we can also take use of that. If, if your current LMS doesn't have, then you still have to think about this. But there are already uh, learning management systems, like for example, you know, be smart who has provisions for creating interactive activities. So you just have to explore. Um, so when you do your assessment, if you are familiar with the PDCA, PDCA is Plan, Do, Check, and Act. Uh, there's a modified uh, cycle called PDCC, which is where you plan, do, check, and change. Now, because your assessments are online, it's easier for you to monitor and check and to have a documentation of it so you can plan whatever your assessment is then you implement it then you check for the results and the accuracy tapos you change it pag kailangan para if ever there's a need to change something so it's a cycle because again even lesson planning eh, we change our assessment we change our lesson based on our students and if it is effective or not so by having like online submissions and platforms and even a, a record of your grades, then it will help you monitor your students. Um, students, and it will help you also monitor your assessments. If there's a need to tweak, modify, mas madali na. Kasi kumaga sa, you can do copy-paste within the system. So it's very important for you to always reflect on what assessment you have decided to do, to revise it if necessary, to reinvent or change it, if there's a, is a need to, pag hindi na, if it's not being able to assess what needs to be assessed in the activities, the, on, the uh, assessment activities, if it's not effective, then you can actually choose to reinvent or change it. So just, uh, and I know that you have seen this slide in some presentations perhaps from other people or in the internet. Everybody has a fair selection, but every, as everybody has to take the same exam always. So when you talk about same exam, it's same format. It's same structure, so some people, and then it also gives you a challenge of what are you actually assessing? And you are, are you providing different online opportunities for assessment for your student to learn, to and rather for platform, uh, different online assessment activities for you to aptly assess your student skills on the topic. Remember, ego booms, taxonomy, hindi lang but if in the test it's not only knowledge you also have to test the other domains of learning and you have to also be creative on how do you reach out to check if all the other students really learn but but using a different um but using a different uh parang method of how they express how they learn but then we have to be fair also that's that's also giving them um in equity equitable opportunity to be assessed and to show that they have learned from your lesson Okay, so at this point, and question ako, how do you now feel about, uh, no, earlier I asked you, how do you feel about online learning? Does that particular feeling now change? Medyo nag, yung level of, level of worriness nyo about lear, of doing online learning, is it the same as before? Or has it now changed? Are you now still anxious about learning? So ito, just an example, no? So we ask ourselves, we remind yourself, you have to do, the students who have to have uh, self-assessment. So self-assessment isn't just about learning, uh, asking them how much they learn, but also asking them, are you still okay? Can you still catch up? Um, how are you feeling? Yeah? Are you still okay with the lesson? Um, are you confident about your skills? So at this point, I also ask you, are you now confident or at least your anxiety over um, online assessment and online learning? Medyo, mas medyo nabawasan na ba? So that's the particular question. Yan. So Benjamin Franklin, similar to what Confucius said, Benjamin Franklin said, 
said, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. And then, in, but involve me, then I learn. So, with all of these things, it's ve- we now realize, oh, there's a big challenge or burden for all of us. Because that means all of us are also expected to level up. So, when I talk about online assessment, some of the concepts or most of the concepts are not just about online assessment. They talk about assessment also in general. The difference is also the platform, the technology, the kind of interaction that we have uh, is more challenging because we're not seeing our students face to face. And it's also challenging for and stressful for us because we have to be able to monitor our students in different locations and make sure they all learn. And that at least um, maybe not at the same pace, but we are there to help our students learn. Next. So, yan. Yan po. Ay, wait. For before we... Wait, stop. So, again, I want you to get your... Ado. We just have a little test again because, of course, I know... And dami nating pinag-usapan, di ba? So, I'd like to check. Okay, I have, I, I want to, uh, wait. If you are still using your, de- uh, having your device with you, um, let's try again to play another uh, Kahoot game. Pero ano lang ko, this is not, uh, not necessarily about, as it, the, the questions that I have are not necessarily about, just to, of course, kind of uh, break you in. Of course, after this, you have to reflect on the challenge, what can I do as a teacher to adjust what particular lessons or assessments do I need to convert into an online test? What particular assessments can I convert as um, using an online platform? And medyo, there's a lot of challenge in our plate. But let's see on here if we can actually do another test. Example. Let me just check this. This is the question. Wait, not this. So for now, I know, let me just check. Do you have uh, questions? Do you have a particular uh, clarification before we go to our particular, to our sample testing? Now, when we do code, again, it, why we did it as a diagnostic test, it checks how le- what is the level. Um, can you use this for post-test? Um, yes and no. For poses or like somebody or quiz, possibly, but again, because this platform uses speed and that is a consideration how fast na the disadvantage of the ones who read a little bit slow. So again, this is not, if you do some activities like this, it shouldn't be necessarily graded. If you want, you can motivate or give additional points for the top notch, sure, but it should not be a factor in terms of their uh, uh, scores. So I, I, I'd ask you to, yeah. I'd ask you to um, get your device again. Let's see. This time, this is just, I think, three or four questions. Yeah. Wait, let me just share. Challenge daw, ano, Gibal? Pwede bang magbigay daw prize? <laughs> So, code ID is 7810042. Let me, I'll wait a minute for people to join. Let's see. Kanina, we have a thousand who join. Many would join this particular event. This, there's a question here on online learning, but not all the questions are about online learning. This is just to get the mood from everyone. We have 55. Well, now you answer if they can have a, if they can have a price. <laughs> I don't know how we can monitor it. Again, for those who don't have a device to join, it's fine. This is just for fun. It didn't, you know, no pressure. For this is not an actual online, active online class at present. So, um, you have provisions naman po for, for, for you. Just try to answer on your own. Maybe use a whiteboard like this. Ako sagotan po niya, tingnan niyo kung the same answer. You got the same answer kanina. 
So just recap po kanina. Although the questions earlier on assessment, we have to realize that oh, we need to brush up on our skills also. But what is more important is how you apply. Don't ask, don't ask you to memorize or look at the terms. And, and yan. The more important thing is are you able to apply these concepts, these things when you are already teaching and doing active teaching? So I think we have enough participants. So can we? Okay, let's start. Yan. So let's see the first questions. Wag na, don't sa questions. <laughs> so first question, online learning or distance learning are one and the same. So pareho ba ang online learning and distance learning? I think those who ended the Saturday session can answer this very well. Let's see. So let's do one. You have to answer fast. There's only two. So the answer is five. And you fall. So let me just clarify before we proceed. Um, in the Saturday session that we had, online and distance learning is not the same. Distance learning is involves a lot of other things. It can be the use of radio, mail, uh, CVs, and other platforms. But online learning is just one of the ways that we can do distance learning. Okay, next, oh, si Mr. Lester Lazaro, ang number one. Next, number two. Anong, ito kunas ko, ko nung last Saturday, eh, na, mali yung choices ko kasi. So, let's try this now. What does Corona COVID-19 mean? Corona video kay 19, Corona virus 19, Corporal virus 19, Corazon virus 19. Ano po ang Corona virus? Tignan na natin. Ah, the answer... Yes, ala bakit ano why 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 did others answer corona video okay and so if in the uh, corporal virus ang top answers so let's see who stop so si share naman nag move up okay, question 3 let's see i'm sure if the following are not covid frontliners teachers doctors or nurses alin po dito sa mga ito ang hindi covid frontliner Okay. Hello, teachers. Wo ang ano? Because doctors are not. Remember, be careful of the word "not." Kaya po naka all caps. Like, okay, reminder when you do assessment, if you're gonna use the word "not" or "no." As much as possible, it should be in all caps so that it can be easily seen. Kasi baka katulad po nito, na pressure kayo kasi nakita nyo yung word na COVID frontliners. You were not able to see the word not. That's why a lot of you got the doctors as the answer thinking it's a COVID frontliners. Nurses and police po are frontliners. And so again, that's another tip for assessment. Make sure that uh, there, the way you construct the questions are also there. Oh, si MK naman ang number one. Okay, last question. I don't even remember. Schools are affected. By the COVID pandemic. Sure, of course. Naapektuhan mo ba ang skalahan ng COVID pandemic? This doesn't just talk about the Philippines, I think. The, the statement is for Okay, so the answer is, um, most of the, us got the answer true. Okay, so let's reflect on this one muna. No? So, Third place, congratulations to RJ Likaya. Second place, congratulations to PH. And first place, let's see for oh, challenge. But I'm excited to find out the MT. Congratulations. Okay. So now we go back. Wait. So let's let's go back to the discussion. Let's reflect first on the activity. Um how do I so if we reflect on the, the, the one that we did, let's check the other thing, some of the concepts na natuna natin from online assessment. One, first question, of course, I cannot answer this. Let's reflect. Did I give you enough time to read the questions and answer? Or a lot of you also got pressured? Kasi not all of you were able to answer. Eh. It's only like 50%. Kalahati lang nung nag-join nyo nakakasagot. Bakit? Did I provide enough time for you to answer? Maaring hindi. So, ibig sabihin nun, pag kayo, if you do your assessments, 
put yourself in the shoes of your students. Are you giving them enough time to respond, to do the project, to do the activity? Or baka kulang yung binigay natin na oras? Okay, next question. Remember, I assessed about my questions were about not even related to. Um, a lot of them were not related to the topic. Most were about COVID-19. Then ask yourself, if you are assessing, yung pala dapat, yung tinetest ko is something that I taught or I asked students to read or to learn. So parang that's also a reflection when we do our assessments. Kasi yung feeling yan, that the, how you feel na parang that's not what we were taught. Bakit yan yung tinetest? That's also the challenge when we talk about online assessment and also assessment in general. Are you assessing the same skills that you have taught or you're just assessing something na hindi, masasagutan nila to o kaya nila to? Or make an assumption. Like ako, I, I, it's my mistake. I made an assumption that most of you will get this answer. But then I see, ay, ang daming hindi pala nakuha yung tamang sagot. Like yung who is not COVID frontliner. So if I'm a teacher, then I will go back to the lesson and then probably they teach or uh, as practice kasi I see ah, most of the students didn't get the correct answer. So I have to go back to this assessment and maybe give them additional readings online or do an online class again to explain the concept. So again, it's the same as assessment. It's the same as teaching. The only difference is the particular platform. So that's the particular particular challenge of uh, what we're doing um, as teachers and um, it's very important that we also remember how important our role is and how our mission is also to also teach ourselves because we also have to adjust we also have to um, improve ourselves particularly based on the new normal so as I said, parang ito eh, we also have to be adaptive. Yan. This is actually a binary code, if you know the binary code na inaga, computer language. And if I translate this, so that means in the same way, parang when we speak to our students, it should be in a language that they also understand. When you draft your questions for online assessment, it should also be in a language that is easily, it can easily be understood. And then this is, so parang ano ibig sabihin po niyan, converted. Jezemon, thank you. Becky Mon, Shalemet. Salamat. And in English, it's thank you. The binary code is actually the binary code for the word thank you. Yeah. So at this point, the main question is, are you ready for the next challenge? But before we go there to that particular component, can I ask first if there are questions? Please type your message, and then we will try to monitor and see. What are the particular questions? Uh, are there questions? Let me just check. Okay, please, please do type your questions in the box over there. So, are there questions? Yan. May nabasa po, what, uh, how do we know that the measure is effective to students? That's the purpose of, um, Ms. Jo from Ms. Josephine Cello. That is the purpose of why we also do, uh, there, uh, one is a self-assessment for the students, and then the other is, how is it effective? Kasi una, you did your rubric set. In the checklist of the skills that you put in for your students, um, na, do you, in your checklist, was it nasagot ba o na nakompleto ba yung, what do you call this, yung learning na kailangan nila? So, unang-una, gamitin nyo po yung rubrics nyo dun sa paggawa ng assessment. Bawat assessment, gradean nyo ng may rubrics para at yung rubrics nyo dapat merong learning or mastery component. And then the other is, you can also use self-assessment for the students. Kung if you want to reflect, you can ask a fellow teacher to check it. Uh, do you think this is an appropriate... Uh, assessment for this particular skill, or even you ask the students, do you think, um, parang ano, parang do you think nakapag-share ka ba ng talagang natutunan mo gamit yung assessment, or naging reflection ba yun nung natutunan mo? Was it a reflection of what you learned, the assessment tool that you use? And then the other measure is also go back to the scores of the students. If the, the, the scores are also not as satisfactory, then it may be two things. One can be uh, your teaching is not sufficient, then the other is your teaching, your assessment may not be measuring the same thing as it was intended to measure. 
may nabasa po akong isang kay Miss Teacher Anna, may nabasa po akong article sa isang news channel na FB na may isang organization na mag-start po ng klase sa June. Some uh, um, reacted because they will not risk the child's health, mas gugustuhin na lang daw na homeschooling. Um, there's different aspects to answer this question. One, uh, we have to wait for the Department of Education mandate po, wala pa pong announcement ang DepEd kung kailan po ang official school start. Uh, for public schools, of course, they will follow this uh, religiously o susundin ito. However, if we talk about private schools, especially the ones with the autonomous status, they can actually deviate from uh, DepEd Allender, but they have to sub still submit it for DepEd approval. So, even if a teacher school wants to have an initiative, I think there are also processes that need to be checked in terms of um, if, if regulations are concerned, if uh, especially if the local government has not already issued announcements on this. The other is, of course, there are options kasi pwedeng mag-start ang isang school na hindi face-to-face -face ka So again, um, at this point, there's no finality yet and in terms of how classes will uh, when it, wala pang, we don't have that answer yet, hopefully soon, on when classes will start and how it will start. So, hindi lang siya kailan, but also kung paano siya magsisimula. And then, siguro, maganda po din na uh, may regulations din po tayong kailangan sundin, like in particular, from the Department of Education and also from the local government unit on the particular situation ng inyong lugar. Um, ano po, gaya ng casual na pagkaklase. Uh, dapat din po, I mean, on a personal level, I think schools should also make preparations uh, in terms of the different things. See, we have to be ready for anything as well. Um, wait lang. Um, pwede po bang bigyan ng 5 to 10 minutes ang grupo para makapaghanda? Pwede po bang bigyan din sila ng 5 to 10 minutes para sa grupo ay makapaghanda po sila pagkatapos ng minuto ay nabinigay ng guru ay report pa rin. Gaya ng casual na pagklase. Um, depende po. Tingnan po muna. First of all, check the connectivity po ng mga bata. Kasi baka yung collaboration nila online, um, merong hihintayin pa sila mag-load o pumasok. And then, um, i-assess po ninyo kung yung pinapagawa ninyo ay kaya nila talagang magawa sa 4, 5 to 10 minutes. Kasi hindi katulad nun na susulat nila sa papel at ipa-flash. Yung iba itatype pa yan. Tapos titingnan pa nila kung tama. Unless ang papagawa nyo na activity is they draw it tapos picture and then they load it um kasi again may, may, there's a technology concern and then there's an output concern uh, they can rip, can they report it of course kaya naman po technically kaya ang the, the measure that i tell the teachers whenever they are concerned about time is if you're going to ask your students to do something Simulate it first. Can you try doing it first on, by your own or with groupmate with another friend? You do it online. And then, if you can do it in the time that kailangan mo, dagdagan mo pa. Kasi you're older, you can do it faster uh, tentatively, but technology kids are faster. But if you cannot do it in the time, if you cannot do it with another person on the time you are setting the kids to do, you have to give them a little bit more time to do it. Can you still use... Well, uh, as we said earlier in the earlier slides, yes and no. There are things in the rubrics that can be used. Most of the things in the rubrics when it comes to mastery can be used for the online assessments. Remember, ang mag lang is kung ano yung platform. Imbis na nasa papel, this exam is in online. And then the other is if it's in an LMS, na check niya automatic. There are items that it can be checked automatically. So essentially, most of the rubrics that we use for F2F can be used for online assessment. However, may mga items that we have to change. Like, for example, if it engages them to be physically there. Nyari, katulad na in example natin, neatness and orderliness of workspace. You cannot do that. Or you can add other platforms, like, for example, a provision for use of technology and all of those things. So, uh, it's parang plus and minus. You can use some of the things, but you can also add other things. Yeah. So, other questions? So, by the way, there's a message from uh, Miss Julie. Are you going to go online? Ba? Ms. Uh, this, uh, the Vibal made an announcement that they have a summer class uh, for ages 3 to 18. Um, it comes with an interactive and fun content certificate. So, if you're, like, you have the webinar for teachers, 
Bibal will also have a summer uh, program for kids. And those who are interested may join. Uh, it may join also through joining the official FB page. And so, if uh, while waiting for other questions pertaining to the online assessment, I turn you over to Miss uh, Julie Caban from Vibal. I, sorry. So going back again, this is the end of technology. So please visit the summer.vibalgroup.com for information on the summer classes offered by Vibal for kids ages B to 18. So there are fun activities there. Maybe you can enroll if you have kids. Make sure you try to enroll it. And then you can also see there are examples of different ways to assess learning using the summer school program of uh, Vibal. And so they have this, uh, for, this is the, the workshop that they have for ages 6 to 10, smart kids, math mastery. So while waiting for classes to start, uh, you can, maybe you can encourage your students who need remediation on some topics. And you can also ask your uh, own kids if you are interested to engage in this online platform. It's also a good exercise perhaps for them to exercise how they submit online activities, how they can also uh, do other activities. So in the Vibal Group website, uh, just click uh, the enroll and then also check um, the information. You can also subscribe to their newsletter and maybe I'll flash a screen later and who you can contact um, pertaining to this. So you can ask them about the LMS platform Vival. You can ask them about Vival products and also ask them questions about uh, the summer program offerings of Vival. So it's in the web page of Vival. And I think they're going to post this also in their uh, FB page, if I'm not mistaken. And so participants will also get a certi certificate of completion. So ayun po, that, that's about Vival. And then yeah, and so the question now is, are you ready to use the skills that you use, uh, that you learned today? So for questions, particularly to, for the certificates, uh, for this summer, again, please do not message me about the certificates. I cannot answer that particular question. But you can message me for questions about online learning, online teaching. But for questions on the certificates and all of those things, please message uh, the email that is flashed in front of you. And you may also text or call them in the, the phone lines there and then you can call so call them uh, in their hand. I'm not sure if their landline is working because it's quarantine, but you can text or call them in the phones that are posted there in screen. So wala na po ba tayong questions? Yan. So if there are no questions, um, thank you very much for participating in this webinar. So I hope you learned something, at least something. And let's try to also reflect on how we can actually use these things when you now uh, go back, whether it's on an online classroom or on a face-to-face -face classroom. So thank you very much.